Yeah, see this exhaust right here is in the way. So I'm gonna pry bar up here against the frame. And that's uh, resting against my shoulder, watch this. It's either gonna be really slick or it's uh, gonna be a disaster. So I'm backing up, pry barring down. Ha ha ha, never says I. Hi everybody, good day to you. Cadillac XTS4 with the Vogue wheels. Check them out, yellow walled. This is a 2014 model with powering on. 103,730 miles on the odometer. And customer states, transmission is slipping. So let us go and verify said concern. Notice how I said verify, not sell you a transmission. Uh oh, we're not moving. Oh, there we go. Let's go drive this and see if it is actually slipping or not. Oh yeah, we just kind of decided to not go anymore. Let's stop and see. What... Whoa, that was brutal. Yeah, it's it's got a problem here. Did they drive this car here? There we go. Now we're moving. All right. Not very far. We're going back. Let's go check the fluid level and condition. That's uh, definitely a shifting problem. That actually gave me like whiplash, that hurt. Let's just squeeze on in here real quick like. I'm gonna bust out the scan tool first and uh, just see if we've got any trouble codes that did not request the check engine light. A little odd, but possible. Come here, scanner. We need you. Plug it in, plug it in. Beep. Hey, looky there. 100% oil life. I wonder if they just had an oil change done and someone drained the transmission. Uh huh. Maybe not, but we should, uh, I'm gonna go look for that. That's just an odd coincidence that we're at 100% oil life. That was just reset. Codes menu, what do we got, trans codes? Anybody? No, there's no trouble codes. That must mean it's not broken. Powering down. Poppin' Z-Hood. Yeah. Here, let's just check that oil level real quick. Okay, I see oil. Right, yeah, it's right in the middle, right there. That's good. Decent condition. Let's check transfluid next. There's a dipstick right here under this cap. It's actually part of this cap. Yeah, there's fluid in it. Smells normal. Hmm, okay. Let's check it again while running. Yeah, it's an orange color. Not the greatest, but it's not burnt to a crisp. I'm gonna pull up scan tool data. We're gonna go for a ride again. All right. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There it is. Wow, compound rings. Doo -doo -doo. So real quick, I'm gonna hop into engine data. I would like to see, because I'm fairly convinced somebody's been tinkering with this thing, I want to see if anyone has cleared trouble codes out of this car recently. 
So we're in the ECM right now, and that's gonna be the module that tells us what I think I wanna know. We're gonna click up and scroll all the way back around to the menu to the bottom of the menu. Engine runtime, that's this key on cycle, three minutes. And look at this one, second to last PID. Distance since DTC cleared in miles. Three miles. Somebody just cleared the codes out of this. So there probably was something that helps me out here. Um, turbine speed code or uh, solenoid code, something like that. There's probably a DTC stored in this transmission and uh, it's been cleared out. So I don't have, um, I don't have any direction other than transit does not shift. Other than transmission does not shift. What you saw is what I've got so far. Uh, let's go back into trans. I'm going to review data and we're going to go drive it again. Hopefully I can get a trouble code while we're out because I would really like to know if we have a solenoid fault, if we've got a line pressure fault, if we've got a turbine fault, if we've got a speed sensor fault, it's all kinds of faults. Data. Data. There we go. Trans data. This is what we need. So we have engine RPM. We've got throttle, position sensor percentage. We've got a calculated engine torque. We have an input speed shaft sensor for the transmission. That's 600 and whatever RPM, 622. There we go. I revved it. So it's seeing engine speed coming into the trans on the trans's input shaft. Next, we'll see if we have an output shaft speed RPM. So we're gonna move the car a little bit and we should see this zero change. At least to a one or, yeah, there we go, yep. So there is output shaft speed. Uh, I didn't see if there was a vehicle speed that showed up, that next zero, let's check that one. Yep. Let's see, gear command. It's responding position to all the gear commands. That's working, even key. Let's see, coolant temp, that is registering. That's 181 degrees. Automatic transmission fluid temperature, 107 degrees. Transmission control module temperature, 109 degrees. It's not in hot mode. Solenoids are not commanded on except for pressure valve three. Uh, what else do we see? Some slip RPM for the torque converter. There's always gonna be some torque converter slip RPM because it is a viscous clutch. It uses fluid to transfer mechanical energy. It's pretty fancy. Okay, well, let's go try to drive it some more and uh, see if it throws us a solenoid code or something like that. Backing out the auto. Honks for safety. That first takeoff we just went through, uh, it did not, didn't have a fault at all. That's good. Uh-oh, I forgot my clicks. We're gonna get some clicks in this video one way or the other. I don't think I'm taking a transmission out today, but we are getting some clicks. There, let's roll. Well, that's weird. So far, so good. It's not had a problem at all. Shifted very smooth when we first left. Um, Downshifts are smooth. I know it's there because I saw it. Hmm, weird. Very, very weird. Well, not really. I mean, well, it's not really weird. It, just means that right now that issue is not presenting itself but we did see it I don't think that meets the definition of slipping though what I I kind of think that um, it's got a sticking solenoid or there is fluid pressure making its way somewhere when it shouldn't be intermittently like through a, uh, a leaking o-ring it's it's something internal to the trans um, I think I'm gonna question them again on why the check engine light was just cleared and uh, maybe try to get a little bit of history out of this. Uh, then uh, I, I don't think their answers are really gonna change anything. Um, I'm of the estimation based on what I've seen so far that uh, there's an internal issue with this unit 
and it should probably be removed and disassembled for inspection. Now, I'm not that guy. I do not dig into automatic transmissions. I've got my reasons. Uh, so, at best, I can take this unit out and we can send it over to the trans guys and then I can pick it up and bring it back and put it in. That would be um, my maximum level of involvement with this unit. But, uh, let's, uh, like I said, let's go find out some more info first and then um, you know, I guess we'll go from there. You know, one thing I can say about this caddy is the brake pads that they put on in this thing were junk. This thing does not stop at all. It's like you just got to stand on the pedal to make it stop. Yeah, that's one of those things I don't think people should cheap out on. Not, not the brake pads. Not brake pads or tires. Cheap out somewhere else. You want to be able to stop. All right, parking's the auto. Let me bust out my uh, tablet. At that point, appropriate replacement parts can be determined. Period. End of transmission. Period. And no, oh, that was that was not the one I wanted. I wanted this one. Show keyboard. Minimize, save, complete. Complete with doodly doo doos and everything else. Oh, you know what? I did not add the part about verifying the uh, transmission fluid level or the oil, recent oil change. I didn't verify that. I bet they went to the oil change place and it had a check engine light on and the guys drove it and found that it was operating normally. So they said, hey, customer, I'll clear your codes for you. Blah, blah, blah. And then they did that and then it happened again and now they're here and now I have no information. Oh no, stop clearing trouble codes, everybody. Don't clear a code unless you made a repair, ever. Don't do it, stop that. It doesn't help you and it certainly does not help me. In fact, it will cost you money. It's like the fire alarm is going off and you, you just turn the alarm off and go back to sleep. Well, what if your house is on fire? You wouldn't just turn it off and leave and walk away like it didn't happen. You would at least look for fire or smell for fire. I would, you know, you'd smell for it at least. Stop turning off alarms. That stuff is there for a reason. Okay, powering down. I'm gonna go tell everybody what I found and what we need to do. Get some more info. See you guys in a second. And I learned I'm going to need a tool for this. Uh, there was a car that was dropped off. It's actually been here for a while, which displeases me because I could have been working on that. Anyway, it was dropped off and the, the key is zip tied somewhere. I'm not going to show you where it's at because, you know, it's, it's the hidden zip tied key location. But we're going to go fetch that key. Uh, there's something going on about a vibration with an S10 pick -em up truck. All right, got through that little hurdle. Let's go drive this thing, see what the deal is. It's hot, that's what it is. Oh no. Let's see what we got here. I know it's an S10. Hmm. It's got a new Jasper engine at 299,638 miles. Okay, what year is this thing? 2002? Let's see. Oh, dang, I was wrong. How about a 97? 1997 Chevrolet S10. 4.3 liter. Brand new engine. Current mileage on the odometer is 300,821 miles. That's pretty nice. It's going to start. Keys bent. Recommend key. This key doesn't fit in this ignition. I guess this is the spare key. What What is this? Uphill battle day? First, we've got the sunroof that was broken a key that doesn't work come on <laughs> y'all are killing me today is do nothing friday all right we'll just go ahead and lock that again we don't need to go in there all right we have an opportunity for redemption rs10 man brought us the uh the actual key the one that fits I, the other key does does work it's cut properly but it just didn't fit in that ignition slot it's blue so you know it's good Aha. Oh, access denied. Entry granted. Okay. Uh, that's a 4.3. I hear it with my ears. It's hot in here. All right, so the complaint is uh, vibration at 60. They had the tires balanced somewhere else. I think it's got new tires. Yeah, it's got new tires and... Uh, 
front and rear, okay. But it vibrates, we wanna go find out why it vibrates. So uh, let's go out and drive it and find out why it vibrates. I have a special place in my heart for S10s. It's what I had when I was in high school and shortly after like the post high school times. And I loved my S10 Blazer. I'd really like to have an S10 with the turbo. Does anybody have one? Safety click. And we're off. Well, right off the get-go, 50 miles per hour, I feel a vibe for sure. I think it vibrates like everywhere. I think I feel it out back, like rear axle out back. See what happens if I go faster. It's definitely not a wheel balance. Hmm. Look, a visual indicator of vibration. See the cell phone thing flippy flopping? All right, we're back, powering down. <laughs> Flip this thing up in the air, do a visual inspection and uh, We'll see if something's out of place that's causing this vibe. Maybe uh, maybe it's a bad tire, bent rim, bearings falling off. Who knows? Let's go find out. There. Good. Next. Where's this next one go? I like that. Like so. Good. Right. That's good. I like you right there. Butamus. That is not butamus. Hey, there's that green subscribe button again. Moving on up. Safety. Well, I guess we should uh, check out the tires first to make sure that they are uh, not out of round. And I don't think they are. Not that one. Let's check this one over here. You never know. Could be a bad brand new tire. Nope. Let's check our carrier bearing. That's new. Yep. That's the drive shaft. Hot. Okay, yeah, this is this is a new drive shaft or rebuilt at least. Hmm. A lot of this stuff is new. New engine, new drive shaft, new fuel filter. Yeah, it's Jasper colored alright. New transmission fluid leak. New front brakes, look at that. Wow, this guy loves his S10. Yep, that's all new pads, calipers, rotors, ball joints, high rod ends, engine. Uh, needs new sway bar link bushings. Your sway bar bushings needs new front end. I'm gonna say that right now. These are always flippy floppy loose. Um, Let's check these tires. I don't think one of these is separated. I didn't feel anything in the steering wheel. Yeah, that's good. Flip this back down. I'm going to put it in gear and spin up the rear axle. And then we'll see if we cannot see the vibration coming down. So I may have to get a helpy helper for this, but uh, we'll try to do it solo at first restarting the engine all right i'm just gonna reach up and put this in the drive it won't go anywhere these wheels are off the ground did i make it to drive no i'm still in oh camera gravity okay trans is in drive let's let off the brake go check it out we're in one-wheel wonder mode. So 
a lot of flipping flopping. This wheel is out of ground. Look at that. Well, excuse me now. The tire is out of ground. Big high spot on it. And the wheel looks good. Again, high spot, yeah. Wheel looks good. Drive shaft is running straight, that's good. I like that. in this truck and put your foot on the brake. Go in there and uh, put your hand on the brake real quick. I'm gonna hold this tire so it stops. And then when after I let go or when I tell you to come over here to me. What? Just put just hit the brakes real quick. Can you reach? Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a chunky sounding brake. Harder, push it harder. That's weird. All right, uh, let it up. Let it go. Yeah, let it up. Let it speed up some. You hear that grinding noise? Okay, hit the brake. Hit the brake. Yeah, here's some noise in there. Yeah, you can hop on out, just let off the brake. I did momentarily see that tire over there turn and it had a similar hop to it. But these tires have a terrible hop in them. So I'm going to recommend, well, first I'm gonna find out if it started doing this vibration after they put the tires on it or not. Uh, regardless, that's not exactly acceptable when we're, uh, when we're hunting down some kind of a vibration. So uh, I think I should recommend for them to replace this and then we're gonna reevaluate. So let's go have that conversation and uh, we'll go from there. I think this is going to contribute to my day of failures because we didn't sell this dude these tires So we can offer no solution to his problem um, So he's gonna have to take it back to the people that sold him the tires that he took it back to that he took it back to that he took it back to again So again another epic failure I can I can accomplish nothing today Okay, uh, our customer wants to come over here and see this before he goes back to the other shop uh, so he can complain about the tires, I guess, and get new ones. Um, so that being said, this is going to stay right here. Uh, however, the day is not lost yet. Uh, there's one more hole for redemption. Uh, I've got a Chevrolet Colorado here, and uh, I should be able to get through this one no problem. Uh, customer states replace transmission filter and fluid. So we're going <laughs> to real easy, real easy work here. We're going to come over here. We're going to drop the pan down, slap a new filter in it, put it together, fill it back up. Have a nice day. That's the plan. All hopes of salvaging this day is not yet lost. 2015 Chevrolet Colorado 3.6 liter V6. 153,420 miles in the odometer. Uh, super easy one. I don't even have to think. Customer states. Replace transmission filter and fluid. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, hopefully I can get something done today. It's been a very inefficient day in, in my opinion. I, I mean, I did some things, but I just don't, don't feel complete here. So uh, we're gonna make one last ditch effort to get something finished up and see how this goes. Dang, that looks good. A little further, farther. There we go. Parking the auto, powering down. Left-handed popping easy hood. Yeah, this really works out. I don't mind being sort of mindless on a Friday. Well, first things first, let's notice an engine oil leak. Not terrible, but it's not good. Anyway, we're not here for that. We're here for this drain plug and these perimeter bolts around this pan because we're going to drop this pan down and stick a new filter in it. That is the plan. Okay, so uh, do -do -do, one thing I, I do like to do uh, when draining trans is do -do -do, that do not have a dipstick like this one. Just drain it into a bucket so I can measure what comes out just for fun. I know that's not actual procedure, but what if it was overfilled? Good to know things. All right. Come on. 
that's that's puny. What? All right. Well, while that's draining, we can start pulling bolts out. Don't spill it. That'll thwart my measurements for my measurement effort. Whoa! Got it. Save the day. Saved the day. Alright, so I did a recheck on that and it's like 3.2 quarts and we're almost done. Based on what's in the jug, we're pulling out about 2.5, so yeah, 3.2 is, is what it is. Um, I've already gone ahead and pulled out most of these bolts except for that one and one in the back, so let's go ahead and drop this pan down now. Here, we can just go ahead and get rid of this right now. I don't need this uh, old fluid anymore. Two bolts, I think, just two. One out back. Ah, oh, the fluid's warm. Hot. And this last one right over here. Hmm. Are we? Oh no, I missed one. There's a hidden one right here. I didn't see it, the exhaust is in the way. There's the rest of that fluid. Sketchy. I don't want to spill this because I want to measure it and it's not gonna work. Oh now I'm in a sticky situation here. Literally. Okay. Well, only one thing to do. Fry bar. Yeah, see this exhaust right here is in the way. So I'm gonna pry bar up here is the frame and that's uh resting against my shoulder watch this it's either gonna be really slick or it's uh, gonna be a disaster so i'm backing up pry barring down oh, oh, oh. never says i yeah i was a little nervous on that one i thought i was only gonna have a 50 50 shot of getting it right uh, let's see what's in our pan here It's not a drain, it's a standpipe for filling. Okay. I forgot about the standpipe. That's why it only drained out two and a half quarts instead of 3.2. By the way, that pipe is threaded and removable. All right, this is what we came for. It's our filter right here. It does not bolt in, some of them do, this one does not. It just kind of presses up into its housing and then the pan secures it. So we're just going to wiggle that guy loose. And a little bit more fluid in the filter, no big deal. All right, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's still this, uh, this seal up here that makes the seal between the trans case and the, the filter right there. I need to take that little seal out. Okay, let's just try to grab it with some pliers. Maybe I'll get lucky, and maybe not. One more time. Third time is a charm. Do over. Uh, negative. Okay, next method, I'm just gonna tap this seal in, like cave it in on itself until I can get a hold of it with pliers. It's being reluctant to come out. I know I can get away with leaving it in there. I'm sure plenty of people will tell me it's okay to leave it in there, and, and I know that it is, but I just don't do that. 
Warning, it is very easy to damage the aluminum bore that this seal rides in. I'm taking great care to keep the tool away from the aluminum. Well, we're committed now, aren't we? Yeah, the key here is to not screw up the case. And there's nothing that I'm doing that's gonna come even remotely close to hurting that case. I'm not working any part of the screwdriver against it. Ha! See, it folded it in. Nice smooth Where bore. Go? I don't know. No, that's not good. We got three tries, so we got no text. Did you know that wherever you go, there you are? No. Yes. Today I am. That's the true story. And there you will be. How about that? Alrighty, old seals out, new seals going in. I don't have seal drivers for transmissions because I don't do trans work. But, uh, I do have a socket and that will fit on the flange side of this and serve very nicely as a seal driver. So we'll just set you up right there in your home. With some linear impact encouragement, it'll go right in. Nice. The new filter right here that just slides in. Let's put some lube on it for the sake of the seal. Right there on the end is all you need. Filter click. Okay, let's give this pan gasket surface a good wipe down. So it cannot leak. And we'll clean the magnet off too, because that's nasty. Yeah, let's get all this nasty stuff off of here. Nothing major, it's just very, very fine shavings. Almost like a paste. Which is normal. What we don't want to see is like big chunks. Alright. Good. Okay, we have a new metal impregnated rubber gasket. Goes on like so. It has alignment pins in it, which is good. And I have it misaligned. Not good. There. As soon as I figure out what I'm doing. There. Good. Okay, I'm doing the pry bar thing again with the exhaust. Aha, we're in. All right, bolt number one. Just get an easy one started first. I have to get all of them in before we do any torque. And I'm getting noodle arm fast. Okay, there's one. Woohoo! All right, so I had to lose my gloves. Um, I need to wipe you guys off. You're covered in nasty. All right. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty nasty around here. The condition of this pan is displeasing me. It's covered in filth and I can't like it. So, there's only one thing to do. Make it shiny. Get rid of all this nasty out of here. Okay, so you may have heard me mention earlier that there is no dipstick tube on this transmission. So how do we fill it? We have this little uh, little plug here that we drained out and inside of that there's a standpipe. Uh, however, up here where the dipstick tube normally would be, there's a little rubber plug which feeds into the pan. All I need to do is put fluid into that and then we are good to go. Uh, once that is filled, with the approximate amount of fluid. We'll go up top, start the engine, 
and then we will pull the drain from the standpipe and as it drains when it reaches the top of that little standpipe inside that will be the appropriate level um but before i do that i missed a spot redemption achieved Okie dokes, the way I'm gonna do this is with this hand pump that I have specifically for transmission fluid transfer. This guy hangs out up in the top right here. I've got two gallons of Dextron 6 automatic transmission fluid. I think I only need one. We're gonna find out. Uh-oh, what happened, Peter? Your tablet? Did you leave it in the car? Oh no, I did that once. Doo -doo -doo. All right, we don't want to contaminate our hose right here. We'll wipe that off. Filling, filling, filling. Still filling and watch this tube. Fluid's about to leave this tube and head on up. There she goes. And it goes. Okay, I've drawn in my next cylinder full. And in it goes. A little gurgly that time. I'm not. I'm leaving as soon as humanly possible. As soon as this is done. See you later. All right guys, there's not much to see here except for uh, that hose looking red. So I'm gonna check back in when this thing is refilled and we have to go check the level. Oh, we're full now. I think it just overflowed. Let's go get this thing started and I'm gonna run it through the gears while I'm in there and then we're gonna come out, pull the standpipe plug and it's gonna drain to the proper level and then we're done here. Five o'clock. Yes. Like 440. Either way, huh? Wait. You're late. Forgive me if after that cutscene intermission I sounded a little agitated. I was pumping the fluid into the trans and one of the hoses had come off and it sprayed trans fluid all over my junk and the floor. It made its way over there. Then the other hose popped off and flung fluid over there. And so I had to go find some new pants and I'm just, I'm not happy because I, I, I could have left and not been here for this. Um, it's just not my day. It just, these things happen. I'm not angry because there's no reason to getting angry at uh, circumstances. I'm just annoyed that the whole situation played out like it did. I, I wish I'd have caught it on camera because you guys would have loved to see that, but um, not really what happened here. Okay, we need more fluid. That was not enough. That's grand. Back to the pumping. Uh, no, I am. I'm not going to uh, to let you guys watch me pump my cylinder anymore. I don't have time for that. And plus, if it shoots fluid all over me. I'm gonna I'm gonna release some expletives that uh, are not fit for my family channel. So it's, I think it's best for everyone involved if, if we just cut to the chase and I'll skip right past that part. So uh, don't worry. yeah, and I mean when it shot that fluid out earlier, it was all over me. I mean it, that stuff came out with some force. I didn't realize how much pressure was bottling up inside of the cylinder, but it was, uh, it was pretty violent. And when it released, it was over before I even knew what happened. I was covered. Anyway, I'm on my second go around right now. Uh, we're about a quart through the second gallon. We're already starting to get a little bit of it dripping out of the cylinder here. Hitting the leg. Very annoyed at how this is progressing. I thought it was full, but apparently it's, uh, it's not full. I'm preparing for the third stroke now. 
I just gotta make sure I keep clear of the business end. Whoa, I'm losing it. Yep, happened again. I just made a huge mess everywhere again. I just, I can't control it. bit more. I hope we reach the top of that standpipe soon because I'm running out of fluid. We only got two gallons at this Dextron 6. And I'm not waiting for another delivery. I'll make, I don't know way I'll make someone else do it. I'm already being punished for my good nature and willingness to, to please others check see what we got here got fluid yet yeah there we go all right that's good so as soon as that slows down we'll be done I think it's about a quart heavy okay good enough for me it's starting to dribble out of the end Go ahead and plug that right back up. Ah, I flung it everywhere again. No worries. And uh, transmission click. Okay, all that's left over here is the little fill plug that goes in the top of the case right there that is that i'm going to take this out on a quick test drive to make sure she's good and uh it's going to close it out so that being said i'm going to go ahead and close this video out right now because i'm in a hurry so as always like thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you on the next one and most importantly don't forget to have yourself a great day see you guys later bye Colorado coming down, all the way down. Hey, it moves. All right. All righty, good everybody. I think one quick spin around the block will uh, confirm this thing is all good. Thanks for watching again. See you later. Parking the auto winders up powering down. Pew.